Coming up on Fox 44 News at 9, Election Day was today, and we'll give you the latest updates on the vote counts for the 14 state constitutional amendments. And protesters gathered outside of the Supreme Court today fighting to keep firearms out of domestic abusers' hands. Also, the capital murder trial for Marvin Guy continues for day two. We have the details. Live from Waco, Temple, and Colleen, your news now. This is Fox 44 News at 9. Good evening. Thanks, to, thanks for joining us for Fox 44 News at 9. I'm Adam Hooper. And I'm MG Montemayor. Well, Fox 44 News is your local election headquarters, and we are following dozens of races right now from across central Texas. You can find the latest election results at the bottom of your screen right now and also on fox44news.com. Fox 44's Renako G is following the voter turnout tonight. She joins us live from the McLennan County Elections Office in Waco. Renako, how's it going? Hey, I'm Jean Adam. Election workers have been counting votes and just working around the clock to ensure this overall process is a smooth one. As we receive the final vote count for the night, throughout the day, we have seen plenty of voters in and out of the 46 polling sites across McLennan County. And in Bell County, going into that last hour of voting, election offices tallied up more than 11,000 ballots cast a day. Back in McLennan County, Elections Administrator Jared Goldsmith says this election's turnout is bigger than the one in November of 2021. You can visit our website at fox44news.com for the latest on those election results. As for now, I send it back to you, Adam and MG. Live in Waco, Renako G, Fox 44 News. Thanks, Renako. Along with 14 constitutional amendments, there are several issues on the ballot today. That's right. Among the biggest issues before voters are school bonds, so let's take a look at a few. Mart ISD has three bonds on the ballot. The first is for $33 million to fund construction and maintenance of new buildings, update technology, equipment, and security. And as of now, only 1% of the vote is in for that one. And uh, there's also there a $5 good. million dollar bond to build a stadium for Mart schools. Again, 1% reporting, 53% so far for, still not worth reporting yet, only 1% coming in at this point. And finally, Proposition C is for $12 million to build athletic training and practice facilities for the schools, along with other recreational facilities. That is at 58% against, and only 1% is in. We'll we, have more election We hope that here. as the evening yeah. continues, more of those precincts will start reporting and we'll have more accurate numbers for you. Exactly. Again, they'll be running at the bottom of your screen as well. There we go. All right, gun violence prevention advocates are sounding the alarm about a Supreme Court case that could allow domestic abusers to own firearms. That's right, and today the justices heard a case challenging a federal law that bars people under domestic violence restraining orders from having guns. Our Hannah Brandt has more details. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! While standing in front of the Supreme Court, Donna Burdick was thinking of her daughter Marlene, who she says was shot and killed by her abuser. I don't want any family to have to experience what we, we have experienced. That's why she was part of a rally on Tuesday, as the Supreme Court heard a case challenging a federal law that bars domestic abusers from having guns. The case revolves around a Texas man convicted of gun charges because of a restraining order issued after he hit and threatened his girlfriend. His lawyers argued that violated his Second Amendment rights. Very consequential actions that go against an individual's fundamental right to keep arms. This case was sparked by the court's ruling last year, expanding gun rights by saying restrictions need historical precedent. But during Tuesday's arguments, even some conservative justices seemed skeptical. The legislature can make judgments to disarm people consistently with the Second Amendment based on dangerousness. And the protesters gathered here on the steps of the Supreme Court tell me lives are at stake here. The Supreme Court could open the doors for um, just more victims, more violence, more bloodshed, which is terrifying. School shooting survivor Camille Paradis hopes the court listens to the pleas of advocates. Can't stop! Won't stop! Gun control activist Angela Farrell Zabala says abuse victims already face scary odds. Anytime an abuser has a firearm, that woman is five times more likely to be shot and killed. And she argues if the high court lets abusers have firearms. This is a death sentence for women and families across this country. In Washington, I'm Hannah Brandt. Seven SWAT members who performed a no-knock raid on Marvin Guy's apartment testified today in day two of Guy's capital murder trial. Yeah, the May 9th, 2014 operation ended with the death of Colleen Detective Charles Dinwiddie. The prosecution and defense cross-examined each officer to highlight different aspects of, on this day. 
to inform the jury. The defense brought up moments when the SWAT members were unsuccessful in the operation that unfolded into tragedy. In the operation, one of the SWAT members dropped a flash grenade outside causing a disorienting effect when the shooting occurred. The defense also emphasized how the officers didn't see an armed person in the house when shooting. The officers only saw figures. On the prosecution's end, they emphasize how many of the officers heard and some even saw gunfire come from Guy's bedroom window. Each SWAT team member did say they could see clearly without the night vision goggles on their helmets. Sound was emphasized by the prosecution as well as for each officer saying they were made to announce their presence. The impact of what happened to Charles, Charles Denwitty was also emphasized. SWAT team members say he was hit in the face and it was hard to see him that way. A former Rockdale High School teacher is facing charges of possessing child pornography and having an inappropriate relationship with a student. The Rockdale School District was alerted to the allegations against Shawnee Despain on September 21st and suspended her immediately. The district and Rockdale police investigated the allegations and Despain re resigned days later. She turned herself into police today and is being held in the Milam County Jail on a combined bond of $350,000. The Brazos, Brazos County Sheriff's Office and the Texas Rangers are investigating what caused the death of an inmate on Monday. According to the Sheriff's Office, a 69-year-old man, whose name has not been released, was in jail when he asked for medical assistance around 7 Monday morning. An ambulance took him to a hospital in Bryan where he died from medical complications at around 1 in the afternoon. The Sheriff's Office says there does not appear to be any suspicious circumstances surrounding the inmate's death. The man charged in the death of a Dallas transgender woman pleaded guilty in court Monday. Kendra Lyles was sentenced to 48 years in prison for shooting and killing Malaysia Booker in 2019. Candace Sweat spoke with the Booker's father after the sentencing. Pierre Booker says he simply wanted justice for his child, Malaysia Booker. Now, some four years later, the man who took her life has been sentenced. I didn't want him to die. I didn't want him to take death in I just wanted him to go somewhere where he could sit and think about it. The trauma that you caused other people's family. 37-year-old Kendra Lyles pleaded guilty to murder for the 2019 shooting death of Booker, a transgender woman. Before her death, Booker made headlines in a separate incident, a viral video showing her being kicked and punched in a parking lot after a car crash. Pierre says Malaysia was looking forward to moving on with her life until it was cut short by Lyles. 48 years, do you feel like that's justice? Not really, you know, but my thing is, you know, life is life. As for the murder, Dallas police have not named other suspects beyond Lyles, but Pierre isn't convinced Lyles acted alone and says this one question haunts him. The only thing I really want to know is what was my child's last words before y'all committed y'all's act? Did they beg for their mama? Did they beg for me? Did they beg for granny, papa, or something? Lyles will face Booker's family this week during victim impact statements before completing his 48-year sentence. Pierre Booker says he carried a heavy burden following Malaysia's murder. I was like, man, maybe something I done when I was younger is this punishment for what I done. That's how I felt. Now he's thankful to see justice as he learns to live without her. We needed you, but God gave you a better job. He needed you more than we did. The Belton Police Department is giving away free steering wheel locks in order to deter significant rise in Kia and Hyundai thefts. The department says in the past four months, 13 Kias and Hyundais have been stolen in Belton and 19 have been broken into. If you are an owner of any of these two vehicles, the department recommends that you take extra safety precautions. You can visit the Belton Police Department station and pick up a free steering wheel lock while supplies last. He was holding an event to honor veterans on Wednesday. It's going to take place at the Santa Fe Plaza on West Avenue at 11.30 in the morning. The ceremony will feature remarks from city officials, military leaders, and special guests. Temple ISD Choir will perform a selection of songs as well. The sixth annual Veterans Salute will take place Wednesday at the Harker Heights Auditorium. The concert honoring veterans starts at 7 in the evening and will feature the concert bands from all of the high schools in Colleen as well as the KISD All-Star Marching Band. Public is invited to attend both free events.
A Waco resident has hit the jackpot. The Texas Lottery says a local resident claimed a top prize winning ticket worth $1 million in its million dollar lotteria game. The ticket was purchased at the Bellmead Grocery Mart located at 1902 Old Dallas Road. The winner has chosen to remain anonymous. The Texas Lottery says the overall odds of winning any prize in the game are 1 in 3.29, including break even prizes. Continuing our election coverage, early voting totals give us a decisive look at most of the major constitutional amendments on tonight's ballot. That's right. Our Ryan Chandler, he joins us from the Capitol with a statewide look at the changes coming for Texas's future. Ryan. Hey, good evening, y'all. Low turnout in this election, that's for sure, but very high expectations for the future of Texas. The relatively few number of voters that actually turned out and cast their ballot are making big decisions, putting billions of dollars into projects for Texas's future and giving some Texans a much needed property tax break. We took a look at a few of the proposals and a few of the Texans whose lives will be changed tonight. Property taxes, parks and pensions, all getting an upgrade in Texas. Prop 4 will save them money. The state's largest property tax cut, now official, cutting the average home's bill by about $1,200 a year. We know this is the biggest property tax cut in American history. We think it's in the world's history. But former Texas teachers still feel the worst impacts of inflation. People are basically living from month to month. Retired teachers like Joe Ramirez haven't seen a cost of living adjustment in 20 years. After Tuesday's election, Prop 9 will change that for the better. To make sure that their futures, you know, and their golden years are better off. From the golden years to the younger years. It's going to make a big difference. Voters lifting a financial burden from child care facilities to allow them to thrive without property taxes. If facilities were able to lower their childcare property taxes, then they'd be able to keep childcare tuition rates steady. Billions more going to water, universities, and broadband, as almost all propositions hold a commanding early lead. So those three propositions sailing through, as are about 13 others, but we just got official confirmation that one of these propositions has failed. That's Prop 13, and it would have increased the mandatory age of retirement for state judges from 75 to 79. Now, how does that affect everybody? Why is that on the ballot? Well, it could have a major shakeup uh, on the Texas Supreme Court, because now that that proposition has failed, the Chief Justice, the 74-year-old Nathan Hecht on our Supreme Court, will have to retire on his next birthday. From the Texas Capitol, I'm Ryan Chandler. Back to y'all. Thanks, Ryan. Coming up, we'll give you an update on the war in Israel as the fighting reaches its one-month anniversary. And Congressman Rashida Tlaib now faces two separate censure resolutions over comments she made about the war in Israel. Those details when we return. This is Fox 44 News at 9 with Adam Hooper, M.G. Montemayor, AMS Certified Chief Meteorologist Mike LaPointe, and Sports with Eric Kelly.